What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here, and in today's video we're going to be talking about templates for Revit, more specifically for reinforced concrete structures in Revit. Uh, now, about a month ago I have released a new template on my website on BalkanArctic.com. Uh, it's a template for exactly this, reinforced concrete structures. Uh, now, this is a template that has been created by a civil engineer uh, who has developed, his, uh, developed this template for his own uses, and then we decided to team up and bring it kind of for for you guys to make it available uh, for for everybody uh, now uh, for, for I, I wanted to create this video to kind of promote that uh, template but also I didn't want it to just be like a promotional video so I decided why not make it a video where I'm just going to be showing you what would you want to include in a structural template what are some of the possibilities what are things that you should be thinking about if you decide that you perhaps want to create a template of your own for structural reinforced concrete or for something else perhaps. So that's going to be the topic of today's video. Uh, now before we jump into that video, obviously if you want to check this template out, I'm going to be leaving a link to it in the description of this video and then also above in the cards. Uh, also on my website you can find kind of related to this, uh, you have a shape uh, rebar shape family pack. Uh, it's also included in the families on the website. Now, if you get a template, the rebar shapes will be included there. But if you just want the rebar shape families, that's available as well. And then, of course, if you want to learn about reinforced concrete structures in Revit and how to model actual structures, well, I have an entire course on that topic, so you can check that out as well. Okay, now, without any further ado, let's jump straight into Revit. And this is kind of the, the, the starting view for this. Uh, this is actually, uh, as part of the template, there is this project, which is kind of designed to showcase uh, the template and the possibilities. It's just a very simple project. Uh, it has been designed to have everything that you need. So uh, floors, columns, walls, beams, uh, and so on. Uh, and then uh, everything is kind of covered in depth. So let's get started. Let's talk about this. So first, I just want to talk about the families. So obviously, when you're building a template, especially a reinforced concrete template, you want to include families for that exact purpose. Uh, so obviously, what do we have here is structural beams, structural walls, uh, things like that. Now you don't need too much, you just need something to get you started. Obviously the, the dimensions are going to change from project to project, but you always want to have at least one which can then be modified. Same thing goes with the structural walls, same thing goes with the structural columns, uh, and so on. Uh, now, apart from that, reinforcement is probably even more important because for reinforcement, for example, for a column, you just have one column, but then you have a ton of reinforcement in that, and that means a lot of different families. So for that, if I just go here to the project browser, let's expand it just a little bit. Now, if I go here to families, you will see that if I go down here, you want to think about including uh, rebar bars, obviously, you want to include rebar hooks, rebar shapes. Now rebar shapes are most important and then for all of these rebar shapes uh, you want to make sure that the shape images are uh, included because when you have sh shape images you can then generate uh, you can then generate schedules which do include those shape images so everything kind of comes together uh, perfectly so uh, definitely something to to consider is just all of the rebar families and then of course not just structural rebar uh, but things like uh, fabric areas things like structural fabric reinforcement and and so on uh, re, uh, structural area reinforcement and uh, structural fabric reinforcement. Yeah, sorry. So all of those families are something that has to be included so you can kind of cover all of the different uh, methods and approaches to reinforcement. And then once you have the families inside, it's really easy to modify them later on. So if you have like, uh, if, if you want to have like a different type of rebar bars or something like that, you can always just copy one of them and, and modify them. But it's important to have something to kind of get you started, something to duplicate in order to, to modify it. Uh, okay, 
moving forward, uh, kind of going from families, I want to talk about the actual project browser. So for your project browser, you can actually organize it. So we have this option, if you right click on views, uh, uh, and here you will see that we actually have browser organization, it's called Bal Balkan Architect. And if I go to edit, you will see uh, the sorting and grouping that has been applied in this case. So basically, what this does is it allows you to have better organization of your views. So specifically for uh, having kind of structural uh, rebar projects or structural reinforced concrete projects, uh, you want to have uh, views for each individual item. So every column is probably going to recover a view, uh, every beam, every wall, every floor. So everything that's reinforced, you want to have views for that. So a really good method uh, at least the one that's used in this particular uh, template is to separate it by levels. So for example, imagine if you have like a really large building, many floors, and you want to have, uh, you want to uh, get views for a very specific beam or a very specific floor, then I can say, okay, I want to go to level one, then do you want formwork or do you want reinforcement? Which type of views are you looking for? And then I can say, okay, I want reinforcement. So I can expand that. And then here we have the floors and then we have all of the views for the floors uh, for that. And this is position one. So you can see all of them are kind of grouped together. So these are all referring to the same floor slab. And if I open one of these up, let's give it a second. There we go. So it's just going to open up as a uh, as that floor view, and then here you have that entire floor. So it's a really good approach uh, to have it grouped by a level because then it's really easy to find what you're looking for. So it goes from level, then the type of view that you're looking for, and then the element itself that you're creating the view for. In this case, columns, floors, and walls. Obviously, you can add beams and so on. Here uh, on level one, we don't have beams. I don't think, yeah. So we don't have beams on level one, so that's why there's no beams here. And on level two, there would be beams, obviously. Okay, uh, moving forward, if I just go to this view, uh, what you'll see here is we have some custom tags. So you want to have custom tags, uh, in this case for this particular template, because it has been designed to be used for, let's say, broader audience, uh, you will see that you have many different versions. So you can have kind of reporting the bar diameter or number of bars plus the bar diameter or the bar diameter plus distance, number of bars plus bar diameter plus distance, and then uh, mark, bar diameter, and comment. So for this particular case, uh, we have created pretty much everything. Uh, if you're creating just a template for yourself, then obviously we just create the uh, uh, create the uh, the tags that uh, that would report only what you need for your set of kind of rules and regulations. So in this case, uh, we have used the number of bars plus bar diameter plus distance. So uh, we have three bars uh, that are 10 millimeters in diameter, and they are at a distance of 15 centimeters. So that's that's the that, that's what has been used here for terminology. And then you can see for the rest of these same thing goes everywhere. So we have used this type of a uh, rebar tag. Uh, okay, uh, now moving forward, let's talk about schedules. So schedules are really important, but uh, what you can do for schedules is you can have schedules as part of your template. Now the downside of that is usually as you probably know, when you're building a building inside of Revit, schedules immediately start filling up according to the elements that you have placed. Uh, now, what you can do uh, and what has been done for this particular template is if I scroll down to schedules, you will see that again, schedules have their own kind of browser organization. And as part of that organization, the first set is Balkan Architect template schedules. So these are basically template schedules, which you can use in order to kind of get you started. Now let me demonstrate how these work because they're really interesting. So for example, here we have uh, multiple ones. Let's go with the rebar schedule. And in this case, again, because it has been aimed at a larger audience, we have kind of regular rebar schedules, rebar schedules for the BBS uh, British standard. And then we have rebar schedules for rebar images. Now, in this case, let's just go with the regular rebar schedule. Uh, if I want to use, let's say, if I want to create a rebar schedule, I can just come to this schedule. This is like a template schedule. I can right click 
I can go to duplicate view, duplicate it. Then I can come here, I can right click and rename that view. And then I can say, let's call it the, the test floor schedule. Okay, so once I have created this new schedule, now I want to categorize it properly, uh, make sure that it's in the proper place among the schedules. So then I can just come here to the properties and you can see this instead of Balkan Arctic template schedules, I want this to be a rebar schedule. So just put it under rebar. Uh, this is schedule and then rebar again. There we go. So hit apply. And now it's just going to jump down to all of the rebar schedules. Now something interesting that you will notice here for this particular schedule, even though we have, we can see that there is some rebar here. Uh, we have some rebar here, we have some rebar there, there's actually just <laughs> a lot of rebar in this particular model still, uh, and in this particular floor, uh, still this test schedule is completely empty. Well, this schedule has been designed to be empty and then you fill it up by using filters. So these filters are designed to use uh, something that's called the partition parameter. So what you'll see here is that for all of your rebar, you have this partition parameter. It's a built-in parameter uh, inside of Revit and you can just give it the partition that you want to use. This is a way of organizing rebar, uh, naming rebar so you know where it is and you can just you can yeah you can categorize and organize rebar i think it's simple enough so anyways you can actually use this in this case this particular parameter so when you come to your schedule you can just go here to filters and you can see that this has been filtered by partition and then it says equals and then we have here nothing so because it equals nothing that's why we have an empty schedule now if i want to go and if i want to use that position one that's the partition for that uh, level one floor uh, slab. If I click OK and hit apply, it's going to fill up with all of that information. So, but just by assigning proper partitions and using proper um, system for assigning partitions, then you can just define that uh, partition here through the filter and the schedule will automatically fill out. So it's a good way to have those empty schedules. Just They're just there, you can copy them and then you can just fill them up with the exact information that you want to see inside of those schedules. So I think this is uh, this is just a, a really cool option. And then finally, uh, obviously we have some uh, view templates. So let's go actually back to here, for example. So obviously you want to have view templates here. We have form work views and we have reinforcement views. So those two uh, templates are included and then depending on are you creating a form work or reinforcement view, you would assign the, the correct template. And then also here we have some filters just to get us started. So uh, as you can see here, we have uh, filters for reinforcement sections, uh, form work sections. And then here we just have some other additional filters uh, for this particular project. So those are some of the things that you should kind of uh, think about and things that you should consider uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to designing your own template if you want to design that, that template uh, and then of course if you want to get this template as i said you can get it on my uh, website so balkanarctic.com uh, apart with the template you get this kind of project you get templates obviously for revit 2020 all the way up to the latest version revit 2023 uh, now it is only available in metric for now if there is enough interest, uh, we might uh, create it in the Imperial version as well. Uh, and yeah, so make sure to check it out if you're interested in something like this. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, BalkanArctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.